everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, seven, and five. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist, intentional lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below the video. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you my word for 2020. Now, if you don't know what the word of the year is or a word for a particular year, it's a concept that's been floating around for a while, and basically, you pick a word to sort of hinge the rest of your actions on for the year, the rest of your emotions, the rest of your choices. It's the word that underlies the path that you want your life to take this year. The overarching theme, if you will, the, the guiding principle, the guiding concept. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, which is why you should pick one that resonates with you. Last year, my word of the year was curate. I loved it. It definitely defined a lot of aspects of my life. For example, my no by year was inspired by the word curate. Um, my desire to tamp down my urge to buy every single homeschooling thing, all of that to decrease the physical clutter in my home. That was all driven by that word curate. It also extended into spiritual areas of my life where I wanted to curate my friendships, really prune through the amount of things that I was spending my energy on, etc. Now this year, drum roll please, my word of the year is time. Now time is an interesting choice, right? Because I think that initially when you pick a word like that, it seems to be very business-like and structured and regimented and not really as soul expansive as we might wish. The reason I pick time is because I think nowadays, like never before, we have demands on our time, whether we are working or not, whether we are stay-at-home moms or working moms, there is a competition for our attention and our time in a way that there hasn't existed before, largely because of smartphones and our continuous access to information and input and social media. The amount of time we give to things has shifted in a large scale, I think, from even like five years ago in our own lives because of smartphones, because of computers and laptops and the mobility of information. Before, when you wanted to look up, you know, who wrote Beowulf, you had to wait until you got to a library or your computer at home or whatever. If you wanted to find, you know, best way to take out a wine stain, you filed that away in the back of your head, you waited until you got home, you maybe pulled out like better housekeeping or something, thumbed through it, figured out a way to do it. Nowadays, you just ask Siri, what's the best way to get out of wine stain? And you go ahead and do that. And it interrupts your time. That ability to know things quicker, to have information faster, to see what your aunt is doing on her trip to Vienna right now, to show your friend who's sitting next to you, oh, let me show you this thing, takes time. Even though we're doing each of these individual actions faster and faster and faster and faster, we're doing so many more of them that it's taking time. And I have definitely been guilty of not stewarding my time appropriately. In the past year, as this process of curation has happened, I have realized that a lot of the things I've been spending my time on are not ways in which I want to spend my life. And that Annie Dillard quote kept resounding in my mind, you know, the way that we spend our days is, of course, the way that we spend our lives. And I don't want to spend my life on Instagram or editing a YouTube video or doing things that really in 10 years will mean nothing to me. I will not care about so-and-so's vacation pictures in Bora Bora. I will not care about that random question that I had that totally did not need to be answered while I was playing a board game with my daughter, but I felt that itch and that need and that weight of that phone in my pocket, and so I looked it up for myself anyway. And I really want to be a more careful steward of my time this year. There are definite goals that I have. I definitely wanna launch my project memory curriculum for y'all. Um, thank you so much, by the way, to those of you who are beta testers. Your feedback has been invaluable for that. And I want to craft my life and my days in such a way that they're not regimented, but that the time that I am spending awake 
is spent on things that I want to remember, spent on things where I'm creating something and not just consuming content, um, spent on relationship building with my children and with my husband and with my friends, with myself as well. I think that time can be a word that induces anxiety when we know in our hearts that we are not spending it well. And I definitely have that reaction to the word. When I say the word time, it's generally followed by a complaint or in a sentence that isn't a complaint. I never have time for this. There's never enough time. The time just got away from me. It's very rare that I use that word in a positive sense where I say, I had such a wonderful time doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, today was such a wonderful time. Let's have a great time today. To really look at time as an opportunity and a gift to live our lives, to craft our days in such a way that we are actually in it. We are here in our lives right now, enjoying our time, using our time wisely. And you know, using our time wisely is one of those expressions that gets thrown around a lot. And it sounds boring. And it sounds like something like a headmistress would say or a principal. And I think that instead of ha giving it that meaning, we can give it a more rich meaning. To see time as a gift, to see time as unfurling in front of us, to walk over it in real time, to be present as time unfurls, I think is a challenge to us, especially in this age where everything moves so quickly, where it feels like time is rushing past us. I want to craft my life to make my decisions, to hone my skills in such a way that I am present as time unfurls, instead of it just marching over me or being lost to me. I want to be here in it. So basically, as time pushes past, I want to walk with it. It's like fighting a current versus swimming with the current. Time is going to keep moving. Our children are gonna keep getting older. The seasons are going to change. You know, 2019 swept by, 2020 will sweep by. As it does, I wanna be moving in real time with it. So I wanna change my relationship to the word. I wanna take more responsibility for how time moves in my life. And I want to make it more worthwhile because every second truly does have value. The way we shape our days is, as Annie Dillard said, really the way we live our lives. And I just wanna be cognizant of that. When I waste time, it is my fault. When I indulge in time, doing something that brings me joy, that is my choice. So instead of making time my enemy, I really wanna make it much more of my friend this year. I wanna embrace the time that I have it is what we have, right? We have the here and now, we have our past. We can embrace it and use it well and for joy, or we can let it sort of sweep by us, you know, let us just sort of thrashing about in this time current. And I wanna stop that thrashing about. I want to be more conscious and aware of how I am swimming in the time that I have left to me. So that is my word of the year, you guys. It is time. I would love to hear about what your word of the year is. Let me know how it's gonna affect your life, how it's gonna affect your choices in the year to come. And I might do even word of the year updates throughout the year because I think it's really important to write it down somewhere, to see it all the time. Ah, see, <laughs> to, to really let it seep into your day, into your psyche so that it actually creates this ripple effect of affecting all your small decisions as well as your large, broad, overreaching ones. As always, you guys, thank you so much for joining me here. I know your time is valuable to you and I do value that you spend some of it with me. I wish you the very best new year and every happiness in 2020. Remember to comment down below with your word of the year. I'd love to see what it is. Thanks so much. 